in southern Tasmania who's just about to cause a huge collapse in her craft room if she's not careful. Just moving one of my lights over a bit so I can see a wee bit better. Forgive the uh, the light, the, snow, the, the sun being there. It's uh, coming at that direction into the craft room. There's not much I can do about it at the moment, so hopefully it'll move that way and not that way, but we'll see how we go. Uh, anyway, thanks for joining me, everyone, and I'm just going to make sure that everything is... Yeah, it looks like the volume is okay. Vision looks okay as much as it can at the moment. Yep, all good. Okay, um, no uh, promotions at the beginning of the video today. You guys know that we've got our 35, 35th year anniversary uh, joining special on at the moment where you get 35% off the standard um starter kit or you can add 35 percent worth more more product to the starter kit so that's the, the the choice you have to make there a great saving if you're interested and you also know about my uh, introduction to card making class or course that i'm running at the moment so you, if you want to know about either of those things just drop onto my facebook page anyway today i'm a bit excited i'm bringing you a brand new um, online exclusive product. You've probably seen a few demonstrators um, playing with it already. Um, mine just arrived in the craft room during the week, so I was really excited to start giving it a bit of a play. It's called the Garden Meadow Bundle. So here it has the stamp set here. Not a bit of Christmas to be seen there at all, really, um, which is uh, quite a bit of a relief, actually. And it has some lovely dyes as well, which we'll have a look at a little bit later on also. So, yeah, lovely sort of garden, obviously, by the name. Garden-themed items, a little ba uh, basket of flowers, the very popular gumboot, some little tools, the, um, the wheelbarrow here with flowers, which I'm going to use today, uh, some other little flowers as well, and that cute little garden gate also. So hopefully you like this one. Um, yeah, it's um, it's lovely. It's really nice. Now, I'm not quite, I don't know about you guys, and this is probably me being sacrilegious or something, I'm not quite ready for Christmas yet. I don't know. I mean, I know people love it and they, they um, start getting their Christmas decorations up in October and all those sorts of things. But the way my family is, I have between now and Christmas, I have one, two, three, four, five major birthdays to get through so um yeah i'm not quite ready to to put on the christmas hat just yet until i get through um some of these birthdays and things which are way up until christmas so usually christmas happens at the last minute at my house when i finally get a chance to breathe okay so this is the card here that i made um when i was playing first of all i'm actually using um I'm actually using the dies, so you can see, and the cute little um, wheelbarrow and some of the little cute blooms. I like the, the white. When I started, I liked the idea of the white background just so that the images would pop. I've used the really nice, um, in the die set, there's a nice archway, and I've popped the, once I've cut the archway, I popped it through our exposed brick embossing folder just to give it that sort of outside worn, sort of bricky sort of look to it and I really like this card and I've used one of the little um, um, gold um, birds that comes with the collection actually I haven't mentioned the collection the bundle obviously is the bundle um, but to make a collection you have to add all the extra bits and with this one the extra bits are probably a real highlight um, we have little um, I think they call them dragonflies and birds little gold adhesive dragonflies and birds there's some dragonflies there and then there's two styles of birds so we'll use one of those for this and I think the highlight is the designer series paper which I've got it all mucked around here so you can only see the ends backs but it's got beautiful beautiful landscapes so garden sort of meadow landscapes so that's a meadow there's a lovely sky there you could use with sort of a garden wildflowers sort of there and I won't go through all of them that they are fundamentally um, just gorgeous so and there's sort of a sort of a, art sort of a painting representation of some wildflowers yeah just so 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 good especially when you put them with the archway you've seen probably seen a lot of demonstrators popping those images behind the archway so it looks like you're um 
you're looking through a doorway to the outside. Um, just as a bit of a heads up for people who do my product classes, I'm actually thinking of, yeah, I'm pretty much decided to sample, to use this designer series paper as my product for <clears throat> what's next month, November. Um, and because it's an online exclusive, I'm going to start advertising it early in the month. It goes um, live to customers on the 7th of November. Um, and with being an online exclusive, there's no guarantee that it will last um, or it'll be reordered once it uh, runs out. So <clears throat> I will probably start advertising the product class in November quite early, like towards the end of October. And if you want to be sure that you're going to get in on the product class, we probably have to get a wiggle on um, as pretty much as ordering on the 7th of November. So just a heads up there, it'll be the paper. I think I've sort of vaguely priced it out. The paper, half a pack of the birds and butter, um, dragonflies and kit to make six cards. And I think I would do that just for under $50. I think it's $48, something like that. And I have worked out one of our cards. So one of our cards that we'll do as the class is this lovely bay window card? So I'll give you the kit to make that, and you obviously use the paper out of the out of the um, out of the the kit that you buy, or the, the pack that you buy as part of the class price. So we'll get enough to make two of those. Um, just gorgeous. You can see the whole panorama there through the card, and it flicks open like like that and closes like that. So that will be one of the cards. I'm thinking I'll do something with the archway. And then, I don't know, we'll do something else. The third card still is um, up in the air, but there'll be definitely three cards. You get enough to make two of each, the paper and half a pack of bling. And as I said, probably the best thing, probably under $50. Okay, so let's get crafting. I told you there was going to be no um, advertising this time, but anyway. So this card here, I'm going to sort of have a slight variation on it for what I show you, and then you guys can tell me which one you like best. It's just I had a bit of a brainwave this morning. Um, when I popped that together, I do like the white behind, but I thought we could make it even nicer with a little bit of a variation. So stay with me. We'll end up comparing the two cards, and they'll be fundamentally the same. It's just the one I'm doing has a little bit of a tweak. Okay, uh, right, so we're going to start with our normal size card base. This is in white. Uh, so start with eight and a quarter by five and a half and score in the middle for our normal card base. So that's the same for both cards. We're also going to need the archway. And as I mentioned, I've cut this archway with the die, with the archway from the die. It's a lovely big archway. And you can see it's got little um, em 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 embossing little dashes embossed into it as well so it gives you sort of a sort of a nice little frame and you can use the inside as a cutout or you can use the outside as a window so that's you know they have the em em embossing on both sides and then obviously you have you have a little bit of a mountain some grassy things here you can cut out that's actually upside down but anyway all the images you can cut out and a gate so you can actually you have a gate here that's just a standalone gate. It doesn't have a die. And to make this card, I've used, as I say, I've used the archway on a piece of white, then popped it through the exposed brick embossing folder to give it a bit of a bricky look. Um, and then I've cut two of the gates. Now the gates are quite little. So they're a, they're a smaller gate this time. We've had much larger sort of picket fences before. These gates are quite small. And I found that the archway is quite big so I've actually cut two and I'm going to pop them together so that they look like they're a taller gate so that's one thing I will do in both designs um, we'll bring the original card here and you can see you can see behind there I've actually got two of those little fences just so they look a little, a little bit taller just one down here just didn't seem to fit the perspective of the card okay so we've got our card base and we've got our archway and we've got our Fences. So as you can see there with the original card, I've basically just stamped the sentiment straight onto that black, that blank background. Brainwaves can hurt. Yeah, they did hurt me this morning, Deb. I can tell you when I'm trying to work out what to whether to go with the new design or just stick with the original. And I've got my two little fences there as well, which I've die cut in white. 
So that's the same for both cards. Now, the difference for this second card, and I'll show you what I played with before you guys joined me, and I'll show you, then I'll show you how I did it, is that I did this with, um, which is supposed to be sort of like fluffy blue sky with sort of a cloud sort of thing at the back or um, and with sort of just a sort of a general green hazy, hazy sort of thing in the background. So, and then when I bring my um, my archway in, it sits on it like that. So that, I thought, takes a little bit of the plainness away from the original card. So, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. I'll show you how I did that uh, and um, we'll compare the two cards at the end and see what you think. So for this little background, I needed a, a sort of a template or a sort of a, what's the word? I'm losing my words these days. Like, a, yeah, I'm going to say a template or a cutout of some clouds so that I could brush them. And I don't have a, a die that cuts out a wavy, cloudy sort of shape. So I thought, well, how am I going to do that? So I sat down with a piece of blank white cardstock and my two-inch punch, which is here somewhere. Here's my two-inch punch here. So my two-inch circle punch and a piece of cardstock. And I basically just brought the cardstock in and sort of just made random cloudy sort of peaks there. So it sort of looked like a bit of a bit of a cloud head there. Okay. And then I thought, oh, that's really cool. I, I can use that. So I bought in my card base or the card front, I popped it on there, and I thought, hang on, if I get the my blending brush in the blue. That's the wrong way. That car, that that cloud. If I do it that way, that cloud's going to look weird because it's going to be blue at the bottom, whereas actually that's where I want clouds to be lighter or fluffier or white, if that makes sense. So basically, it was sort of the opposite of what I wanted. So what I did to create my template was grab another piece of white cardstock. And it's this one here. I placed it, I'll do it just on a blank piece just to show you. It's a bit hard to show you on what it's already been done. I just didn't want to waste another piece. I just grabbed my my sort of negative, which I suppose is what it is. It's the opposite of what I wanted. Popped it on another piece, grabbed a pencil, and just like went around, just used the curves to and it would have been, as I say, far easier if I had a, a die or something that would have cut these things out, but I didn't. So, so I've got those little things there. Then I got my my paper snips, and with the most careful cutting out I've ever done in my whole entire life, I cut those arches or those little clouds out of the white, and I came up with this. So this is what I created once I cut out my little clouds and that those clouds are in the right way to create that background effect there. So that, I'll grab a, a piece of cardstock and we'll actually make that little background so you can see what I mean. Okay, so this is just a piece of white cardstock. I might cut it down to the right size for the card front so I don't waste ink and time colouring something that's not going to make the cut. I'm going to have it slightly smaller than my archway just so it doesn't peek out too much. The piece of cardstock that my card, my archway is on. You bring in this. Start from the top because I want it to be darker as it goes, um, comes down. So darker at the top and lighter as it comes down. So we'll start sponging at the top. And we're just going to grab my blending brush and my balmy blue ink, which is here somewhere. There it is, balmy blue. And it brought out to me that my balmy blue ink pad needed a major re-inking, so it's probably really dark now. Just coming down onto the cardstock with the brush and just. that. 
there we have our first one and we're going to come down we'll move the clouds so that they sort of don't line up exactly they look a bit a bit different Stevie's going out on his bike somewhere now I'm going to get this I want this to be lighter so I want it to be gradually lighter as we go down so we'll keep going And then again, we'll move our clouds so that they don't look like they've just lined up at all. Bring it this way, I think. Move it again. And again, we're getting lighter and lighter and lighter, so we, the, the sky looks like it radiates down sort of thing. And then I'm just going to bring in my very, very pale blue and just... Staggered a bit. I hate it when that happens. Not overly happy with this one. I'm going to revert to my original because that went a little bit dark just in there, as you can see. And then just to give it a little bit of ground, um, a little bit of green grass at the bottom, I've got my granny apple green over to my green blend and just come in at the bottom and just merge that in with the, the bottom of the blue. There we are. And we ended up with sort of a little fluffy sort of cloudy sky sort of thing there. Exactly. There we are. This one's a little bit darker than my original. I think I actually like the, the original one better. I made that a little bit, that's a little bit darker so you can see the technique, but this one you can see is quite a bit lighter at the top. So this is the preferred one, which I'll probably go with, I think. And then, so just grab, this is uh, Thinking of You from the stamp set uh, in um, Night of Navy ink and just pop that in the middle of the clouds. This one looks like it's a bit of a stormy sky, doesn't it? We'll put that one aside for later. Okay, so that is my little background technique that um, I did this morning. I'm sure it's been done before, but I felt quite clever when I worked out how to make those little clouds without an actual um, cloud die, which is cool. Now, I know there is a cloud die. Stamping Up has one, but um, I haven't. A uh, cloud stamp uh, punch, but I haven't got one. So I'm going to keep that one. And if I ever need some clouds in the future, I know what to do. Okay, so we're using this little one here. I'm going to pop it onto my card front with just some glue. I'm going to dimensional um, the actual wall so it sort of sticks up a wee bit. I know what that went darker because I just re-inked my balmy blue. That's why it did it. It had more ink in it. Be a bit more light hand, light more light handed when I do it again because the balmy blue was practically run out when I did this one, which it's, it's actually quite nice. Okay, so there we have our card front. Now we'll bring in our the wall. So I'm going to sit that over there. And I think that's just cute on its own, isn't it? <laughs> Obviously, the thinking of you, if we weren't going to do anything else, the thinking of you would could be more central, but I've popped it quite high because I'm going to put our little um, wheelbarrow and stuff down the bottom. Okay, so I'll grab some dimensionals and we'll pop our brick wall on, our archway. Quite a few dimensionals for this one. 
because you're not only supporting the edge of the card, you're also supporting the archway itself. I just bought some new um, bought some new envelopes and um, yeah, big envelopes for when catalogue time comes and smaller envelopes for classes and stuff and, um, and some stamps and they just just were delivered. I only ordered them. Some places just have the, the delivery thing down pat, don't they? I ordered it from Office Works. it was, yesterday and the man has already been to deliver it today, which is amazing. So And it was um, with the amount I spent, it was free. So I don't know why you'd, you wouldn't bother going to the post office or um, anywhere really. <laughs> Probably not good for jobs, but it was very handy not having to pop over into the city to go to office works, which is always a nightmare getting parking. But I was really impressed. He said he'd be here and he was. Not like other companies I could mention. But shan't. Okay, so there's all our dimension backings. My robo vacuum is going to have a heart attack. Okay, so we're going to pop this one on the front of our card. There we are. Cute. Okay, I'm going to pop the fence on now just because I'm going to, I want to pop that in and under. Now, me and white cardstock generally don't get on very well because I get far too much glue everywhere and I leave dark, horrible fingerprints. Uh, but this time I'm going to minimise my glue. I'm just putting glue on that far edge there just once and I'm going to pop it in under the edge of our doorway and yeah. Now that you might think that's not enough glue, Julianne. What are you doing? It's just that with the little wheelbarrow that I'm going to add, I'm going to it'll it'll glue that down with the dimensionals that I use on the wheelbarrow, basically. So I'm not going to tempt fate with using glue on my white cardstock. It always ends up as a disaster. I'm just going to leave those hanging free for the moment. Just glue it at the edge there, and when I put the dimensionals on my wheelbarrow, it'll keep them in place just to not tempt fate. But I will actually pop that aside to dry while we do our wheelbarrow. Okay, so grabbing a, might as well use this one, grabbing a piece, uh, just a scrap of card stock, I'm going to stamp my wheelbarrow. I'm also going to stamp some of the little flowers. And also there's a little pot, there's a little um, sort of tuft of flowers there as well. I'm going to use that also. So let's do this. Okay, so anyone who's joining us a wee bit late, I have mentioned that the designer series paper will be the feature of my next month's um, product class. So if you were thinking of buying it, you might want to hang it out and buy it as part of the class because it will be um, better value when, once I add the cards, bases and all those sorts of things and the, um, the actual flat, um, little birds and um, birds and dragonflies. You were thinking of buying it, as I say. It might be best to hold off, and, well, not hold off, just buy it through me and get the class as much better value. Um, unless you want multiple packs, which is also up to you. But, um, yeah, so we'll do three cards, enough to make two of each, the paper and half a pack of bling. As I say, it'll come in at under 50, I think about 48. I think I priced it at yesterday on the back of an envelope. Two of these little flowers swatch there. And one little tuft of 
weeds. And let's face it, if the weeds in my garden look like these, I probably wouldn't never weed again, but sadly they don't. Cute little weeds here. There we go. Now, because I've made the background of this one a bluey colour, um, the blue with the with the um, clouds, I'm going to change slightly change the colour of my wheelbarrow. I'll make it a blue wheelbarrow rather than a red one. Ah, uh, which blue? Which blue? Which blue? Maybe what's that one? Light night of navy. Yeah, let's try that. Yep, that'll work. Okay, so wheelbarrow. So just with my blends, the red wheelbarrow that I did before, I did the whole blending thing so it looked like parts of it were in shadow. Um, I won't do that today because you guys don't want to sit and watch me blend for... 40 minutes, so we'll just do solid colours. I thought I would stick to more like a light blue flower as well, like a forget me not purpley mauve blue flowers just to stay with the blue theme also. Um, stick with a nice yellow. Where's my yellow? Wheel hub. Did that before. Don't do that. That's better. This is um. This is called light. Light black, which I always giggle about. This particular blend color is light black, which I suppose to me is a contradiction in terms, really. But it's it's a dark. Dark, 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 dark grey. And this is my dark smoky slate for my metal bits. That's my wheelbarrow. Yeah, I like that blue. Um, some flowers. Now, I've changed the green because I had used the granny apple green in the ground, so I thought I'd make the leaves in this a combination of light granny apple green and dark granny apple green. I just randomly I'm going to do light and dark. I think this is the light one. Yes. Okay. 
in the dark. Yes, I don't know when I saw what I'd created. <laughs> Sometimes your creations end up a little bit different to how you anticipated. When I saw that sort of sky that came out of it, I sort of thought it looked a bit like you know the movies like to like to tell us the the um, the gates, the pearly gates will be you know. I thought thinking of you was quite an appropriate saying, even maybe a bit morbid, but yes, that's what I thought when um, when I saw what I'd created. It'd be a nice little sympathy card, I suppose, something like that. So I'm just I don't tend to make sympathy cards not since we lost Dad last year. Not that I'm superstitious or anything but I tend to like to make them um, as they're needed so to speak rather than stock them up <laughs> anyway um, okay so uh, let's go with our, our um, these here look a bit like they just look like um, sort of a lavender or a stock or something so I'm going to stick with the um, the light and dark Highland Heather for those. Somebody's back, he must have been shopping. Where'd you go? Oh, down the beach. Down the beach? Oh, is it nice? It is 13 degrees. Oh! So, you know, 13, 13 degrees. <laughs> Does that mean you're not going swimming at the moment? What's I'm thinking about. You're mad. Totally mad. Okay, so there's our light and dark uh, Highland Heather. Now I'll grab my bar, my balmy blue. I think we'll go light and dark balmy blue. Yes, we will. Just for the rest of our little flowers. <laughs> Stephen headed out. I saw him go through the window. Headed down to the beach. We live two, two streets, one street, a street from the beach down here. And uh, went to check the water temperature. And it's 13 degrees, he tells me. That's Celsius. Obviously, it would be Fahrenheit, it'd be frozen. Um, but yeah, so. And he's contemplating a swim. What to do when you marry a madman? Just go with it, I suppose. Okay, so they're, they're looking really nice. I like this. I'm glad we decided on the blue, me and Sally. There we go. Yeah. And 
and well, little blue ones on here as well. There we are. So I'll just grab my dies and we can die cut these little beauties out and we can add them to our card and we're done. Machine, I think. And what else have we got? That, that's our little weed. Weed. And our little stalks, lavender, what would it be, lavender? The leaves are a bit big. Anyway. I think sometimes if you tried to work out what flowers these are, sometimes you'd go quite mad because I think it's more of an artist interpretation than an actual species sometimes. And I realise that goes a wee bit um, blurry when I get close like that, so I'll take them a bit further away. Just locked my camera focus so it focuses properly on the desk and not doesn't try to readjust itself every time I move. So I was finding that particularly annoying. And I'm sure you were too. Every time I moved, it sort of went and sort of refocused. And even though I could just watch it out of the corner of my eye, it was very annoying. So I've locked it on the desk. So it will be focused 99% of the time, but maybe unfocused when I come too close. But I think we can live with that better than having it refocused for five seconds. Okay, so we've got all our bits. We'll pop our... Oh, that is... That's nice. Look at that. That's so pretty. We'll pop our little wheelbarrow on so it's mostly sitting on the inside of the card or the lower bit so I'm going to pop it on dimensionals on all the bits that are inside the wall so starting about there oh, he's put the jug on it must be coffee time It's nice having him home. Don't I won't ever tell him I said that. It's nice having him home now that he's retired. Although I do watch the bank account a little bit more carefully than I used to. Given that we're on we've lost that income, but yeah, he's not a bad stick. I'll keep him, I think. I've just chopped a little um, dimensional in half there or in thirds just to pop it on the end of that little wheelbarrow handle, which is a bit skinny. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell him, Deb. We will get you all down here one day. We'll have a chatty stamper reunion or something. You can make coffee for all of us. Wouldn't that be lovely? Our, I, that's our goal. Okay, so I'm popping that on just on the little edge there, just so it covers over the fact that oop, covers over the fact that my fences don't go the whole way over. So we'll cover that with our wheelbarrow. Cute. And the little there, I'm going to pop them on that sort of end there, but also on a dimensional. I'll use the little one, little part one that I made. Pop that down there. <laughs> we'll deliver. He delivers to me. He'll deliver to me here, but I don't know if he delivers to Jindera. 
we can ask him. Now these little flowers here, I just popped them on the original card because I felt it needed something. Now this card is a very different proposition to the other one, so I'm not sure that they're going to actually be needed. You guys can tell me. I'm going to pop one in there so it peeks out the side and then the other one was sort of peeking out the side as well and I have to just shove it in there because it's going to get in the way of a dimensional like that. Now, do you think this one, because we've got a, a bit more happening at the top, um, do you think it needs it? Leave it off. Yeah, I'm thinking the same, Deb. So obviously I think they were needed in the original card just to fill in a bit of the space, but I don't think they are needed with this one. So I'll take them out and you guys can tell me which way you, you think I should go. On or off? Leave them off, leave them off. Margaret says leave it off. Which means I've got spares. I could put one inside. That would be cute. Yeah, I'll put one inside. Okay, so last thing to do for this beauty is to add the little gold bird, the bling. Where did I put the gold birds? Here they are. So we just need one little sort of, I think it'd be a, it's like a swallow. It has that sort of swooping sort of um, um, look of a, of a swallow. So I'll just pop, I'll pop that up there. And this one is done. Okay, so now the judge and oh, I'll make that put this little one inside so I don't lose it. Judge and jury, you guys, you can tell me which one you prefer the one with the white background or the one with the um, cloudy blue sky. I think they're very different now. It's very hard to tell which one I like best. I think I'm actually leaning towards the, the blue sky, but that's because it's got blue in it and, you know, I'm a bit partial to my blues. I like this this one. The colours in this one are pretty as well, but I think I'm leaning this way. So um, look at blue sky or, or white, which one do you think? Actually, I don't think it. I think it's not an, a fair contest really because it's um they're so different. Oh, and I was going to get some Stella and just make my, that's what I did in the original, just give my little wheelbarrow a bit of sparkle just because it's a metal wheelbarrow. And sometimes I think we, we put Wink of Stella on things more for ourselves than the recipients because I don't know that. Other people would probably notice that it was there or not, but I do. I like both. Yeah, I like the blue one. Yeah, I've got a bunch of blue ladies, I can tell, haven't I? Yeah. So, yeah, so there we are. So that's my first little play with the um, Garden Meadow bundle. I like to give that a go just using the stamps and the dies first because, as we know, we, we run out of paper. You run out of design. You buy the design series paper, but it runs out. So you need to be able to use the stamps and the dies to, to get some nice um, cards as well. But, I, yeah, I like both of those. They're really nice. Now, remember, it comes in a suite. So with the stamps, the dies, the designer series paper, and um, we're just about finished now, though. The designer series paper and the bling. Oh, and I forgot there's a ribbon. It's a, it is a sweet collection in every sense of the word. It comes with this glorious little, and I've got it wet, this glorious ribbon as well. Um, it's the pecan pie edged ribbon. It's sort of a, a very vanilla sort of thing. And it, I've been having a bit of a play with it last night. It frays beautifully. So I'm going to try and incorporate some frayed ribbon into a card in the future. I did try and bow it. It's quite cottony, sort of thick. Um, as far as bowing is concerned, I mean, it's doable. And it's quite nice. It's sort of a rustic country sort of holly hobby type bow, I suppose. 
quite nice in a bow, but definitely it frays beautifully. So, yeah, well, let's see how we go with that um, in future. Okay, so thanks for joining me today, guys. I know midweek crafting um, probably catches some of you on the hop a bit, but I do like to sort of, there's so much to show you. I don't think I could do it just on a Saturday morning. Um, but speaking of Saturday morning, I will be back then live, usually between 10 and 10.30, something like that, um, local time, which is now daylight savings time. But uh, hopefully I'll see you all again. Um, if you have any questions about any of this, as I say, the Garden Meadow Bundle and the Meandering Meadow Collection um, goes on sale on the 7th. And as I said, if you want to jump in on that product class, as I say, I'm going to um, watch out for that being released fairly early in the month or even late in October so so we can get it and make sure we can get it um, being an online exclusive. But anyway, thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Have a great rest of your week and um, 